The new creation shouldn't have problems with generational curses. That's nonsense. I hear them, it's preached all around the world. And so Christians, they got to get delivered again from generational curses. Well, what if you got problems with a generational curse? What if you got problems with it? Simple. So what do you do? You don't need prayer. Just stand up and walk out of it. That's all. You just, just as fast as you can snap your finger, you're out of it. All you have to do is say, I'm a new creation. That's all. That's all. No fasting. No special prayer sessions. None of that is necessary. Because the man already died and gave you a new life. If any man be in Christ, he is a new creation. Then he says, all things are passed away. And all things are become new. That's all. I can't have problems with that. Generational curses for what? Doesn't matter how many of them were cursed. I'm a new man. I've got a new life in me. I'm a new person. I'm born again. I'm a new creation in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. And you know something? This new creation is superior to Satan. That's what the Bible says. That's why he says, ye have overcome them. You're not trying to. You're not going to. You don't have to do anything to overcome them. You have, didn't we read it a moment ago? First John chapter 4 verse 4. Ye have overcome them, little children. Ye have overcome them. Doesn't say ye shall. Doesn't say ye will. Ye hope to. Ye might. No. It says ye have overcome them. Why? He says because. Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Hallelujah. Uh. So, don't say you're like your great grandpa. Great grandpa had diabetes, so you must have diabetes. Great grandpa was a failure, so you must be, you've got to be a failure. Don't inherit any anything of the devil. Take good things in life. What am I like? Now, what do I think of me? You know, people, they, they have a low self-esteem. Because all their lives, people have said something wrong about them. Maybe when you were growing up, they called you big head, stupid, get out, fool. Some have grown up believing they're fools. I've always been a fool, I'll always be a fool. I've always had a big head, I'll always have one. You know, people are just like that. They call them names, stupid, dollard, all kinds of things. So they've grown up believing something terrible about themselves. And so, you know, Christians, so they come up, I will make it. What are you trying to make? <laughs> I will make it. Make what? If you haven't made it, you never will. Don't try to make it. Did you hear what I said? Don't try to make it. Learn to leave from the throne room. Oh boy. What is it you're called to receive? The Bible says, ye are called to inherit the blessing. Ye are called to inherit a blessing. So why are some people talking about the curses then? Why they move around and talk about the curses? Why they move around and try to find out who's under the curse? 
When you're born again, you're not under a curse. You have to understand that. It's impossible to put a curse on you when you're born again. Even if somebody put a curse on you before you were born again, when you are born again, the curse is automatically cursed. You don't need anybody to take a curse off of you. You see, that's very important. I know, and I'm not being critical, I know that there are people who believe they have a divine responsibility to get God's people out of the curses under which they have found themselves. But I'm here to tell you, according to the Bible, no Christian can be cursed. Even when you look back in the Bible, I tell, from the beginning, I'll just, just give you a few examples. All right? In the garden, when man sinned against God, what did God do? He started out with Adam. He said, Adam, where art thou? Uh, he said, Well, you know, God found him. And, well, he said, I, I hid from you because I was naked. God said, Who told you you were naked? Have you done what I told you not to do? Oh yeah, the woman you gave me. Well, well, blah, blah, blah. And then God said, Woman, what is this that you have done? And, and she said, um, uh, The serpent beguiled me and I did it. And God didn't have no dialogue with the devil. He said, Serpent, upon your belly shall thou go. What happened? He cursed him. Then he said to the woman, he said, now, in pain, you bring for children. That's where labor came from. When they say, oh, the woman has gone to the, to the maternity ward and she's been uh, having labor. She's, she's trying to give birth. It's been five hours now. She's not been able to do it. She's crying. She's calling mommy, daddy, husband, everybody. You know, baby, please come out, baby. She's calling baby, come out. You know, why all of that? Because God said, out of your, out of pain, you're going to have children. Now, watch. When it got to Adam, something happened. Because of the blessing that he had blessed Adam, he could not curse him. What happened to Eve? Very simple. Eve, the Bible shows us, was deceived. Adam was not deceived. And the deception was what God was showing had the result of her deception. Now he turns to Adam, he can't curse him. Why? Because he already said to Adam, you're blessed. He already blessed you. He couldn't curse him. He could not curse him. You know what he did? He said, cursed is the ground for your sake. He said, because of you, I cursed the ground. He could not curse Adam. I'll give you a second example. The Bible tells us about the sons of Noah and what happened to to him when he was he was drunk and uh, about his his three sons and what they did now his second son whom he should have cursed. Did he curse him? No. Where did the curse go? 